Hello, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have a tutorial for a crocheted scarf and this is a pattern that's actually a remake of one of my first crochet patterns and tutorials that I put up. And the reason for that is when I did this one here, I was, I didn't even know like the proper terminology and I was using loops, posts and other things like that. So anyways, and I've also, this one here, I'm beginning the pattern a little bit differently than I did here. And of course I'm using a different yarn and making the tassels longer than this one here. This one's I this one I had tassels in every other stitch, this one in every stitch. So it's a different look. But what's really interesting is these are both number four medium weight yarns. And this one here is made with the Lion Brand Vintage Carousel. And the other is made with the Bernat Premium yarn, the solid color one. They're both number four medium weight yarns, but the Lion Brand yarn is actually finer. This I used a four millimeter crochet hook. This one was four and a half millimeter and the ex exact same pattern except for how I begin it. And they're 21 stitches across, like 21 chains. And the difference in width is this one with the Lion brand is five and a half inches wide, and this one here is seven inches. So that's just literally the difference in the yarn and the crochet hook. And so other than that, they are the same and without tassels, this one is 66 inches uh, long and the tassels leave it at 80 inches. I don't remember this one here and the width was seven inches and I will cross link these patterns and this is just a new improved version and it's just showing you the difference a yarn can make. I find the solid color yarn really shows the stitch pattern off quite nicely more so than the variegated or self-striping yarn. So anyways this is this pattern's lots of fun and it's perfect for beginners. So let's get started. So I am using the Bernat Premium Yarn. This is 100% acrylic yarn. It's a number four medium weight. This ball is seven ounces or 198 grams, 360 yards or 329 meters. And this color is grand purple. And of course you can use any yarn you like and you can make the scarf any size you like. And so for this weight yarn, I'm using the four and a half millimeter crochet hook and then some scissors, a darning needle, and you'll need a stitch marker. So we're going to start by creating a foundation chain. So you want to create a slip knot. And if you're new to crochet, I do have my beginner crochet series that shows you everything you need to know and that will be linked in the description box below. So put the slip knot on your hook and you wanna create a loose foundation chain. If you're not proficient with your tension, then you can go up half a size with your crochet hook. So you're going to yarn over and pull the yarn through the loop and that's a chain one. Yarn over and pull that through the loop, chain two. Yarn over and pull that through the loop. So I'm going to, going to do a foundation chain of 21 stitches. You can make yours as long as you like so the scarf can be any width that you like. And if you want to put tassels in every other stitch, then you want your foundation chain to be an odd number of stitches. So go ahead and create your foundation chain and I'll see you at the end. So I have 21 chains and when you have the number of chains you like, then you'll do a chain one and this is your turning chain. Now you'll see here with your chains, you have your V stitches at the top. This is your front loop. This is your back loop. And then there's also a back bump. I know it's a little hard to see in this color, but you'll see on your chain that will be, there will be a stitch on the back of your chain. And what we're going to do is we're going to skip the turning chain, turn your work over, and you're going to go into that first back bump there you go, just like that. And you'll yarn over, pull the yarn through. You'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, and that's a single crochet. 
then into the next stitch going under that back bump yarn over pull the yarn through you'll have two loops on your hook yarn over pull through two loops and that's a single crochet so you'll single crochet into this back bump and I know it's a little bit hard to see with this yarn but when you turn it over it'll be very obvious with the yarn that you're using so just going through that one loop at the back pull the yarn through and do a single crochet so go ahead and single crochet into that back bump all the way along and I will have 21 single crochets at the end of row one and you'll have however many single crochets that was your beginning foundation chain not including the turning chain so go ahead and do that and I'll see you at the end now here we are at the end of row one making sure to get that very last stitch into the back bump and that's the end of row one now you'll chain one and turn your work now we're going to work half double crochets back into the stitches all the way long so not your turning chain but the first stitch after your turning chain you'll yarn over and you'll put your hook under both loops of that stitch so there's the front loop and the back loop picking those both up and you'll pull the yarn in from behind you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops and that's a half double crochet so yarn over going under both those loops pull the yarn from behind you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops and again yarn over go into the next stitch picking up both loops pull the yarn from behind you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three loops so you'll do a half double crochet under both loops of each stitch all the way along and when you get to the end of row two you will have 21 half double crochets or whatever your beginning chain number was and also this is where you want to use your stitch marker and you'll put your stitch marker in this row here because this is marking the beginning of the stitch pattern so go ahead and do that and I'll see you at the end of this row now coming to the end of row two you want to make sure to get that very last stitch going under both loops with a half double crochet and that's the end of row two and chain one turn your work and row three is just a repeat of row two so yarn over and not your turning chain but the very first stitch after the turning chain this one here yarn over go in under both loops and do your half double crochet and you'll just going to half double crochet under both loops of each stitch until you get to the end and we'll see you there all right so coming to the end of row three you will have 21 a half double crochets and in the beginning you want to make sure to count those stitches because it can be easy to skip this very last stitch and then you would lose a stitch and you'd be down to 20 stitches or whatever so make sure to count your stitches so chain one and turn your work now we're going to chain the change the pattern slightly so you're going to yarn over and begin in the same way and do half double crochet under both loops of the very first stitch and then now you have your your both stitches here your front loop and your back loop and we're going to work into the back loop only so yarn over and you'll see there that's the back loop and you'll do your half double crochet into the back loop only yarn over and not the front loop but not this front loop but the back loop and just going under the one loop and do a half double crochet yarn over half double crochet into the back loop of that stitch and you'll do that all the way along until you get to the end of the row but don't do the very last stitch I'll see you for the very last stitch to show you how to do that 
So carry on and I'll see you at the end. Now coming to the end of row four, I've done half double crochet into the back loop. And so in my very last stitch, I'm going to do a half double crochet under both loops, just like that. And then chain one and turn your work. And again, you wanna count your stitches to make sure you're keeping on track. So I have 21 half double crochets. So row five is just a repeat of row four. So you'll do a half double crochet under both loops of the first stitch, not your turning chain, but the first stitch, and then a half double crochet going under the back loop only of each stitch all the way along until you get to the second to last stitch at the end of this row. So going under the back loop only. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you at the end of row five. All right, here we are. As you come to the end of this row, it can be really easy to miss this last stitch and that's why it's important to count. But you'll see there's one more stitch to go into and that's where you're going to go under both loops of that last stitch with a half double crochet. And there we go. Then chain one and turn your work. And that's the end of the pattern repeat. And the reason why we do a half double crochet under both loops of each row is that it helps to keep a nice sturdy outer edge to the scarf. And that's just a preference that I have when I create my designs. So from here on in, you're going to repeat rows two through five. And so I'll just start row two again. So yarn over, do a half double crochet under both loops of each stitch all the way along. And once you get going and you'll do two rows like that, then you'll bring your stitch marker up and mark this row because this is the beginning of your pattern repeat. So you'll do two rows where you're going under both loops of all the stitches and then you'll do two rows where you begin and going under both stitches and you go under the back loop only and then you finish it going under both loops of the last stitch and turn and repeat that row again. So you'll repeat that pattern over and over again. It's a four row repeat, super easy. Use your stitch markers and you can make this as long as you like. Welcome back. So I have the scarf to the length that I want, which is 66 inches. So I've done a total of 32 four row repeats and that's given me the length of 66 inches. So of course you can make the scarf any length you like and you can see how beautifully this pattern crochets up, especially with a solid color yarn. And it's just so easy, it crochets up very quickly. And so I've stopped here because I wanna make some long tassels, so I've left enough yarn for that. And I'll show you in a minute how to calculate for that. But next I'll just show you how to do the very last row. So you'll finish with the fourth row of your four row repeat. And once you're there, you'll just do a chain one and turn your work. And then you'll simply do a single crochet into both loops of each stitch all the way along. And of course, if you've been keeping count all the way along, you'll have 21 single crochets at the end of this row or whatever number your beginning chain was. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you at the end. All right. So making sure to get that very last stitch, doing your last single crochet, and then you just do a chain one to fasten off. Cut yourself a little tail to cut in the tail end, pull that through, snug that up, and then you'll just put your darning needle on. And I'll just show you how I darn in my tail ends. And I just flip it over and I go in through the back of the stitch 
and I like to go in oh, about an inch and a half or so and bring that through and then you want to sort of pull that out so that it's not puckering and like you don't want to pull it snug like that and kind of make it pucker and gather you want it nice and even and then when you go back you go over back of the loop that you came out of but this one here you want to go over top of that otherwise you'll just pull your stitch back out so go back in the opposite direction and come out just before the end of the scarf and again you want to pull that back so it doesn't pucker and cut your tail sorry this is nearly off camera but you'll do that on the other end with your beginning tail and next we'll do the tassels now to figure out how much yarn you need for your tassels like if you want you can go back to the original video tutorial which again there's a link for that in the description box below to see how I do tassels there um, but in that video I did tassels in every other stitch and here I want to do tassels in every stitch and in that one I just made short tassels and this one I want to make really long tassels so it's up to you whatever you want to do it's um, it's a personal thing and I encourage you to use your own creative initiative for that so in order to calculate how much yarn you need for tassels, do you want them in every stitch or every other stitch? Then decide the length that you want, your finished length. So I want eight inches. So I've measured a jig that is eight inches plus another half inch for the knot. You actually need an inch, but this is uh, double the length. So when you use this jig, one tassel will finish at 17 inches. That's in my case. And that'll give me a finished tassel of about eight inches. So once you know that each single tassel is 17 inches in length, then you can calculate how many you'll need. So for me, I'm going to do two tassels in every stitch. So I have 21 stitches. So I need 42 tassels and they're 17 inches in length and that's for one side so that's 714 inches per side and then you want to multiply that by two for a total of 1430 inches for all the tassels and that's a total of 40 yards so i've measured this off and i have 43 yards so i have enough to make my tassels. So all you do is once you've made your jig, you can just start at the bottom here and you can make a little slot in the cardboard if you want to hold the yarn in place. And then you just use the jig to wrap your yarn and you don't want to pull it too tight because then you'll lose some length in your yarn because the yarn is a little bit flexible and there we go so i'll just do a few of them to demonstrate and you finish with the yarn at the same end that you started with and you can just cut it along the bottom and cut your last piece there and you have your tassels whoops i didn't get through all the yarn there we go and then you have your tassels the length that you want so next i'll show you how to attach them all right so you're going to need your crochet hook and you want to make sure you're wrapping your tassels in the same direction on both ends of your scarf. So lay your scarf out and put a couple of stitch markers on what would be the front of the scarf on both ends. So you want to make sure that the tassels are going on the same direction on each end of the scarf. So working into what would be the front, I've already done a couple here. So you'll just take your tassels, however many you want, and line them up at the end as evenly as you can and pull that snug and then you just put your crochet hook in from the back going under both loops of each stitch or every other stitch or every third stitch whatever you decide to do and then you just pull that through and then again you want to straighten them out at the ends as best as possible pull that nice and snug 
And then you just pull the tail ends through the loop like that and snug that up. And it's as easy as that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all my tassels on and then I'll come back and show you how I trim them. All right, here we go. Now, I've never done tassels in every stitch and what it does is it makes the bottom of the scarf kind of full and makes it a little bit of a curve and fills it out. And that's okay, it's part of the look. And I've also used a hand steamer to give the scarf a gentle press. Um, you can wash it and block it if you like. So you just wanna sort of finger comb it and um, straighten them out as best as you can. And you can use the ruler to sort of comb it as well. And if you like, you can use a straight edge to make it perfect. But I always like to just eyeball my tassels. And I just snip off the obvious long pieces. And just like that, just the obvious long pieces and just take them away. And the ends are a little bit shorter because of the way it pulls up there, but that's okay. And so that's nice and even. And so I can't quite get it all in. So I'll put a picture in here so you can see here how the scarf looks when I'm wearing it. And uh, I just love these tassels and all the stitches like this. I think it looks really great. So there you go. There's that lovely scarf for beginners. And this is really such a beautiful scarf. And if you're new to crochet and you're making these for Christmas presents and gifts for friends and family, they're gonna be very impressed. Super easy pattern, really quick to crochet up. And so this ended up using almost the entire ball of Bernat yarn. This is what I have left. I did cut a few too many tassels, but yes, yeah, so that's cutting it close. So the full ball of the Bernat yarn and the finished scarf is a total of 80 inches and seven inches wide. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel because I will be uploading the occasional tutorial. So take care everyone and thank you for joining me. Thank you.